What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Yes, you read the title of this video correctly. Today, I'm going to attempt to put together an Android gaming PC for one of my good buddies. I really did try to talk him into letting me build him a little gaming PC with some cheaper used parts, but he's not really into PC gaming. He does a lot of mobile gaming, and he's seen a couple of my videos on Android x86, and he wanted something that he could connect to his big TV, play his favorite mobile games, watch some movies, and do some emulation. The first thought that came to mind was the Nvidia Shield, but he only had about $100 to spend, so we're going to try this out today. And the PC I'm going to be using for this setup is a Lenovo M800. I was able to get this on eBay for $72 ship. It actually has an i3-6100, 8GB of RAM, no hard drive, the optical drive is broken, and no power cord. I thought this was a pretty good deal, so I jumped right on it, especially with that 6th generation i3 and 8 gigs of RAM. If there were more available, I would have bought an extra one, and I figured if this project didn't work out, I could always turn this into a nice little Linux machine or a small form factor low-end gaming PC with a GT1030 or something like that. When I received the machine, the optical drive wasn't even in it, but everything is really clean and it does have 8 gigs of RAM. I did test it out without any hard drive connected, was able to get into the BIOS, check out the specs, and it turns out I was lucky enough to get exactly what the listing said it was. So if it was really up to me, I'd just throw an NVIDIA 1030 or an RX 550 in here. A 1050 might be a little too much because the power supply is only 210 watts. But I'm not turning this into a Windows or a Linux PC, so we're going to use the built-in Intel HD 530 graphics along with Prime OS. And by the way, I have absolutely nothing to do with Prime OS. It's just a coincidence that it's called Prime OS. This is a custom build of Android x86. It'll run on PCs and laptops. I have done a full install tutorial, so we're going to skip that in this video. If you want to install this on your own machine, I'll leave a link for that video in the description. There was a couple extras I had to buy for this machine. Like I said, it didn't come with a hard drive, so I went ahead and purchased a cheap $28 240GB SSD, a USB Bluetooth adapter, and a USB Wi-Fi adapter. After that, the total cost on this whole build was $115. I thought I was going to have to get some type of mounting bracket for this 2.5 inch SSD, but I think these might have came with it from the factory because the hard drive bay in this M800 already has a spot for a 2.5 inch drive. The installation of Prime OS went really smooth on this machine. I just installed it to that SSD from a USB drive. Like I mentioned, I do have a full tutorial if you're interested in testing this out. So now that I have Android installed on this machine, I want to see how it really performs. We're going to test out some video playback, then we'll move over to some native Android gaming like PUBG Mobile, Hearthstone, Minecraft, and then finally we'll get into some emulation. So here it is, Prime OS installed without a hitch. Only issue I'm having here is I have to run sound out of the 3.5mm audio jack on this PC. We have full access to the Google Play Store. I've already tested a bunch of stuff and performance is great on this little machine. We have a little app drawer down here. We can go into settings to check out the Prime OS settings and this does support multi-window view. You can turn that on and off per app. I have noticed that using it with Kodi doesn't allow you to resize, so I did have to turn it off with that. But we can go right into multi-window and you can turn it on and off per app. And when it's set to off, the app will launch in full screen mode, so you don't have to resize it yourself. And yes, you can access developer options and turn root on and off in this operating system. So as you can see, I've went through and installed a bunch of stuff. First up, I want to launch Ida64 and just show you that I'm still running on this little Lenovo. Got that 8 gigs of RAM, i3-6100, and the built-in Intel HD 530 graphics. So there's no dedicated GPU in this system. I did go through and run a couple of benchmarks. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Antutu to finish up, so the first one I ran was Geekbench 4. Single core, 4,822. Multi, 9,748. Now comparing this to my Galaxy S10, we're much higher on the single core, but we're a little lower on that multi. But remember, this is a dual core CPU with four threads. Next up, 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme. Now this is the OpenGL 3.1 test. We came in at 4,253. Unfortunately, this build of Prime OS does not support Vulkan, but it is planned for the future. I've been using Pluto TV a lot lately on my Android devices. Works great on this little machine. Same thing with Netflix, but like I said, you'll only get 1080p out of it. Hey. 
Prime OS does come with a built-in key mapper, but there are a lot of games that will work natively with controllers, like the Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. Here's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas at the highest settings. You can get this from the Google Play Store. That's mine. Minecraft Pocket Edition also works flawlessly with controller support. For touch or tap based games, you could use the mouse or you could set up the key mapper if you really want to. This is Hearthstone, running beautifully. And finally, for native Android games, we have PUBG running at the highest settings with the frame rate set to extreme. The key mapper is already preset up for PUBG, and when you start this game, it'll warn you that you're playing on an emulator, so it's only going to pair you with other people playing on an emulator. I'm using a mouse and a keyboard to play this, and it works great. You're not going to be able to play Fortnite on something like this because Epic has certain devices that it'll allow you to install on, so Fortnite is out of the question. Now it's time for some emulation. First up, we're gonna go with PSP using PPSSPP. I'm at 4X resolution. I have no hacks on whatsoever. The FPS is in the top right hand corner and the controller I'm using is an Xbox One controller. I also tested God of War Chains of Olympus and Killzone. Both of those I had to drop the resolution down to 3X, but overall performance is great with PSP emulation. N64 emulation is outstanding on this setup. I was actually able to go to 1440 by 1080 with all of the games that I tested. This is GoldenEye 007. I also tried out Rogue Squadron, but it just won't launch on here. So basically, as long as the game is compatible with the Moopin emulator, you'll have no trouble running it. Sega Saturn emulation also works great using Yoba Sanshiro, and this is actually RetroArch with the Yoba Sanshiro core. And for the final test, we'll go with the Dolphin emulator. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Prime OS doesn't support Vulkan as of making this video, so we're running these in OpenGL but performance really isn't that bad here. So yeah, I think this setup's going to work perfectly. I mean, performance was actually way better than I thought it would be. I know this is a 6th generation i3, but sometimes when you pair these x86 CPUs with Android, it just doesn't work out too well. But with Prime OS, it seems to be functioning fine. Like I said, the only issue that I'm having here is I have to run audio out of a 3.5mm audio jack. So if you have a TV with a 3.5N, you'll still get audio. HDMI audio from this chip, or this PC at least, isn't working right now. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out Prime OS, I do have that full tutorial. Link is on screen now and in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running in Prime OS, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.